Oh, let me see, let me get this link too. The uh... hello, everybody. Welcome to the Failing Forward podcast tonight. I have with me a very special guest, um, somebody who helped me a couple months ago sell my car with Creative Finance, which is kind of kind of crazy. Never heard of that before. Pretty cool. It worked out really well for me. Um, so I'm having with me tonight, Mike Davis. Welcome, Mike. What's going on, man? I appreciate you having me. Dude, this is, this is awesome. I've been wanting to, to get more into your story for a while. Um, yeah. So be, before we get right into all the deets on how to do this, because it's a very, um, it's a very unique thing. I wanted to get into your story a little bit so we can all get to know you. So do you mind just telling us like, where were you when you were about finishing high school, like, or twenties time frame in your life? Yeah. Um, so uh, right after high school, uh, came back to the city. My, my goals at that time were primarily just music. Um, like I've been playing instruments and everything since I was like eight years old. Plenty of talented for music. Over the years, I've, I've had some accomplishments, but my goals at that time was to make it like, you know, super big and um, really? at least as a producer. What what what, what instruments did you play? Just curious. Um, what, trombone, trumpet, a uh, little bit of sax, played the drums, keys. Um, just had a knack, like just talent for music. You know what I mean? It was just like I I, I can. Like you, you play a song. I can tell you the tempo right as soon as I'm hearing it. Like it's just like little things that you just you have a knack for that kind of thing. Um, and I definitely fed it, but uh, oh, cool. you know, life happens. You know what I'm saying? So like we still like I'm still active in, in production and everything, and I've still had some successes. But in terms of like the longevity game and the industry as a whole, is like the kind of stuff you have to do to make it the way you want to go. Is like you know what? There's got to be an easy way to get it out of here. So it's like really um, competitive. I'm sure in the yeah, it, industry it's competitive and it's also like weird you know like from an industry standpoint like only till recently have you been able to as an artist or a creative like really control what you put out and control like who you work with and still be able to make a, a solid living but for the longest time it's always been who you know and uh, the things you have to do to get to know somebody so you can put them on your who you know list it's just like i'm cool with that i'm not I'm not doing all that extra stuff so Mm. Um, you're just you just felt it's just to get it's just like a political game almost yeah yeah it's definitely politics definitely definitely politics Hmm. okay so a lot of the music is so it's so horrible now because it's just much politics talent isn't really the thing that matters as much it's like (laughs) the politics you know what i mean so you know it is what it is yeah yeah it seems like um so i actually play the piano i was a yeah, yeah, I was a music major in college, but I was like not super great at it. Um, mm-hmm. And there were so many people that were just so good at it. Like I remember there was this one guy uh, in school, and he had been raised by this piano guy from the from the college that I was at, and he was yeah. raised from like six years old to be this prodigy. And by the time he was 20 he was like competing in these international competitions and winning pianos and things like that and like yeah i was terrible so i just kind of gave up on it because it was, it was, <laughs> I was not very good but i'm sure you're great though but then but then there's some people that can just play some some jingle that aren't they're not very good at the piano but they can play a jingle and get something catchy on yeah. social media and then they make it mm. big because they just have a jingle. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. It happens all the time. And it, it frustrates you a little bit as a creative because you're like, man, I could have did that. Or like, that's all it took. But a lot of times it's lightning in the bottle. You don't really take it personal. You just keep, keep going. Um, yeah. You know, like eventually if you stick to it, like your time can come around, but you just got to really stick to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, but. Yeah, it's all good. Shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, like it's not for everybody, you know. So like, it's, it's, right. it's definitely not for everybody. Like you, you have you have you found your calling, and you know you're killing it. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you were, so you're still kind of doing music. Yeah, yeah. I was doing music. Um, I mean, I I had you know the the 
uh, backup plan in terms of sales, right? Like I, I started in sales probably at like 17. Um, one of the, the real sales jobs that I had was I was doing door to door sales, selling windows, door side and stuff like that. And I got my real christening into like the grind when we had a blizzard here in Columbia, Maryland. It was like <laughs> 2010, six feet of snow, crazy. But well, uh, we still had to go out. Like they still made us go out. You know what I'm saying? And it was commission only. So if you you had to eat what you killed. If you ain't find nothing to kill, you did not eat. And it was people that was a lot of it was just like sympathy. They would invite me in the house, give me some coffee. Oh, look at you, you know. <laughs> like, we ain't finna buy nothing from you, but <laughs> you know, like we're still, you know, and I was horrible. I was trash. And sales, I had no idea how to really talk to people, how to understand, you know, social cues, dynamics, how to really understand that it's about them, not you. Like I didn't understand that. So uh, I, I did have a dope mentor at the time who was my boss and he became a friend, but he taught me like the game on just how to like sell and how to like, you know, use this as a skill that you can take on. But it was still always in that corporate kind of mindset. So I didn't really know like how to approach it outside of a job. It was just, I would be really good because I would always want to get good at sales. So I would go to the next job and then the next job and I would kill it at each job. And it would just, it, it would get to a space where I'm like, all right, cool, we top sales. Like some jobs, I was top sales in the country. Like it was just, all right, cool, what next? Because it's not making that much money. And then music ain't really doing, you know, as much as I would like it to do. Um, so it was kind of in a rut at some at some space and I ended up moving out to uh, to LA among a, a number of uh, things. But I ended up moving out to LA. It was out in LA for uh, this point now, like you know, seven years. Um, okay. But uh, that's that's like on the journey, it was still just sales. And then we were still doing music on the side. We released stuff. We, we uh, ended up getting a few placements with some major artists and some major companies and you know, that kind of thing. It's starting to see that's a little cool. bit of success there. Um, but sales was always just that kind of backbone and to be like, okay, cool. Let's just figure the sales game out. Cause I know at some point, this is the only thing I, I'm you know, good at outside of music. So let's just be good with this. Cause you don't know where music's going, you know? Um, right, right. And then uh, eventually, uh, I hit a roadblock. Like the last roadblock was end of 2019. Um, well, yeah, mid 2019 into 2019, I had a sales job on Beverly Hills. It was a business funding company. They were like the number one business funding company in the country as far as startup businesses is concerned. And they found their niche. They perfected it. They had a good system and everything. And it was an opportunity to make like a quarter million dollars. And I was just like, all right, cool. Like, let's go in here. Let's figure this game out. I've been top sales everywhere else I've been. It shouldn't be any different. I walked in with the confidence. But when we got in there and as, as the politics and the way that the company was running started changing, I was just like, all right, like, where's my turn? You know what I'm saying? Because they have two levels. They got opener and closer. And of course, top of the opener class and everything, but they didn't advance me fast enough. And their class changed. So I've never got that shot. And time kept going. And I had to wait like another six months. And I'm like, at this point, the grind that I was on, I was living in, I know you don't know uh, California, but yeah. Um, so I was living in- uh, You were driving, yeah. I remember you telling me this story a little bit before, It you had to do like these insane commutes. Yeah, insane way, commutes, right? bro, every, yeah, every day, every day, like three, like three hours in traffic um, every day from, uh, it's a town right past uh, Rancho Cucamonga, I forget what it's called now, it's not just coming to me, but um uh just past Rancho Cucamonga all the way to Beverly Hills every morning and if you live in LA you know that traffic from if you don't leave the house at, at by like 4 15 it's 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 over with you know what I'm saying because you, you're well no not a lot if you don't leave the house by 5 15 sorry but then it's over with so we had to drive all the way from uh there we would leave the house at around like I say maybe like four ish or something like that. And then we get to the office at around six 30 and on a drive back traffic is just as hellish. If you leave the house, I mean, if you leave the job at around like three o'clock traffic is already three o'clock. So we wouldn't get back until six o'clock, but on the way, um, I, you know, I was still working music. I, uh, I was still be working in the car. Like I had, I drove down there with, uh, a colleague who was also my manager at the time. So he would just scoop us and we would carpool cause it was easier. And so in the driver's seat, I mean, in the passenger seat, I would sit there and be making music and stuff like that and trying to figure out another way out. But it wait, eventually wait, got you to were the making place. music while driving? Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> what? How'd you do that? Yeah. 
And bro, it's just, it's just headphones and a laptop, man. You know what I'm saying? I sit in the passenger seat, like on the way in. Oh, because you're um, more into the mixing music, right? And making music. You don't need a you don't need a piano to make music. But you did you have your trombone in the car? No, 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 no. So this is production. This is like um this is on a computer. We're just making making songs and records and stuff like that on a computer. Okay. I don't know that world, but I it's can imagine. Good. Yeah, I just have seen good. like the cat videos where the cat's like going going like this with the the DJ, you know yeah. the what do you what do you call those discs where they go back and forth to? Yeah, turntables. I know what you mean. <laughs> I sound I sound so so out of it right now. I sound it's like an good. old man. Yeah, okay. Good, man. So you so good. you're on your computer producing music. Yeah, yeah, but, but back to the forth. yeah with the commute and to the to the point of that. Like I said, when they denied me the opportunity to advance, um, that's when I just hit every bit of crossroad. I'm like, all right, bro, like this, this doesn't make any sense anymore. Like we get some some traction with music and some placements and stuff like that. The job is supposed to turn into a, like a great opportunity um, sales wise, but then they gave me, they denied me that opportunity. So while I was still working there, I just started researching real estate. I started researching really other ways to get money. And uh, real estate was one of the most common things. I first started out trying to learn Airbnb and the Airbnb turning to wholesaling, doing like cash deals, get properties under contract and wholesaling them for a higher price. Um, started really, really trying to hone in on that skill. And uh, I eventually got a deal under contract. Um, it was a JV deal and we were supposed to make $40,000 on it. And that 40,000 turned into like, we had to split ten thousand dollars so we made like five grand a piece and we, we you know like we, we didn't know like there was a lot of stuff that we had learned uh that we had messed up on but once i got that check from the title company i was like oh this is what i can do because yeah. like all of this other stuff like I, I i ended up leaving the job um i haven't uh thankfully like had a, a nine to five since the beginning of 2020 into 2019 and um like every bit of it since then it's just been like really trying to learn and understand real estate and then eventually got to the place where heard about sub two, heard about creative finance. And that was like a mind blow. Like it just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, and I didn't join sub two, but I ended up working for an investor as his acquisitions to help okay. him get properties. He was in like uh, somewhere in like Kentucky or something like that, but he was just buying property, seller finance just sell, sell the finance and sub too. And he actually introduced me to the idea of creative finance. He also introduced me to some of the coldest sales scripts, mindsets, processes I have ever seen in my life, period. Um, really? yeah, so were so you, like, did you learn creative finance more from that guy or was it more from pace? Do you think? No, nah, I, I learned, I learned the concept of creative finance from, from that guy. From so that I, guy. I, I heard it sub too, just because of the mentorship, but I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't associate it with creative finance. I just heard of the community and the mentorship. It was like, oh, you really want to take your real estate career? You, you join yourself too. And I'm like, I didn't know what that was at that time. But yeah. um, the creative finance guy, like aside from like our, our, our split, but he really taught me like the concept of you can go buy a house with no money out your pocket. You can just create a deal directly with the seller and pay them over time. Like, and I was just like, in my head, when I saw the script and I saw like what we were offering, I repeated it out my own mouth. I was like, there ain't no way somebody gonna say yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, nobody's gonna say yeah it is. This don't even make any sense. Right, and right. Then, it kind of doesn't uh, sometimes. It doesn't seem right. like it would make sense. When I talk to my friends about it, they're like, this sounds illegal or mm -hmm. this, this doesn't sound like a thing. Like right. that's impossible. And I'm like, right. no, it is. It's just, it's very positive. It, I think, I think it's been around for years and years. Um, but it's only because of social media and because people like Pace Morby are starting to explain it, mm -hmm. that all these secrets of truly growing exponentially with your wealth, they're finally yeah. starting to, to be like available to the public. And yeah. So, that, that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, and I mean, like, shout out to Pace at all times, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause he, he really championed the idea of sub two overall. I mean, just creative finance overall, you know what I mean? But, um, well, just, just branding it. Like, yeah, like yeah. people have known about it, but I think it's been behind doors or it's only been knowledge for the super wealthy people, yeah. um, to, 
you know, to know, because most people think you need 25% down. So if you have a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, you can only buy one $400,000 house. But now with right. creative finance, you can, if you have a hundred thousand dollars, you can go buy you get 10 up. Yeah. <laughs> you can, yeah. You can get it's crazy. You get a whole lot. Um, and I like, it's, it, I always call it like picking behind the curtain because like, that's really what creative finance has done. Like for me, and I'm sure a bunch of people, it's just all it is. There's a system in place and they create convenience and hide everything behind the curtain. But when you can peek behind the curtain, you realize that that convenience comes at a cost to like how much you have to actually spend and your inability to really build wealth. But when you get behind the curtain, it's like, okay, this is why they do this. This is what lenders want. This is what, you know, uh, underwriters look for. This is what sellers want. This is what the whole thing is, like what it all means. Then you can apply that and be like, all right, shit, I can go out and get a whole bunch of these. Yeah. You know? So that's, that's, that's really, um, like, like I said, the, the, he, that investor, he taught me the basis of it. Once I started closing some of the deals with him and I was like, this is real cool, but we had a split, whatever the case was. Um, but I took his concepts and then went crazy on creative finance, Googling everything about it, found pace again, went through YouTube university and, uh, I got a deal locked up, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like ended up getting a deal locked up. I downloaded some contracts. Um, and uh, I took it in the escrow, uh, went through the process, but I had no buyer and I didn't necessarily fully understand how to complete the transaction. I had a, a thought about it, but I ended up linking up with a guy sub to his name is Mike Feruzzi. And he was also oh in my Baltimore. Gosh. This yeah. is coming around. I know Mike. Yeah. Yes, this is yeah. wow. What a small world. Yeah, yeah 100%, 100%. So, so Mike's Mike's partners are Nick Pedrick mm -hmm. and Dominic Glacy. Yeah, they they started. They helped me start this podcast. Oh, for real? Yeah, and that's fire, man. That's fire. That's, that's a set. small world. Well, I guess you're yeah. like in the in the like the northeast, like the New England area. I guess so. Maybe, but yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Crazy. yeah it's, it's a Baltimore. I, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Mike a little bit. He's kind of the behind the behind the. I don't talk to him a lot, but um, he's the deal maker basically behind the scenes. I think he's the, yeah. basically an integrator. Is is what Dom has told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. solid guy, S solid guy, man, solid guy. And a shout out to him because yeah. he he helped me. Uh, like he actually introduced me to Manif. And uh, Manif became the buyer on that creative deal. So that deal was in uh, Dundalk, uh, it was in Baltimore County. And that was my first like sub two deal that I actually went out myself and found, locked it up and then wholesaled it to them. They turned it into an Airbnb, it's still doing good to this day. Um, ended up getting a, a nice little fee out of that. I think me and, uh, uh, me and Mike had split probably like $14,000 or something like that. And then, but that was like the light that turned on for me. And I took some of the money, joined sub two immediately. And like from there, I was like, yo, I need to learn every single thing about this because like I want properties for myself, let alone I want to learn how to like really wholesale like to a higher cliff. So that instead of just doing one deal like every six months, we do like a few deals a month. You know what I mean? And that's that's really what the focus has been, you know, being inside of sub two and where we get to uh kind of today. And the the side quest mission became the cars. Uh, because it was just so many different ways to do creative finance, to utilize creative finance. And I was just like, all right, you know, and nobody was really dealing with the car. So I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's kind of yeah my track from beginning to now. Yeah, that's awesome. I think a lot of people um, have that, have that moment where they're like, oh my gosh, this is insane. And you're like, tell me more, tell me more. And you just want it and want it and want it. Yeah. Um, Cause I definitely went down that path of like, Holy crap! This is insane. Um, yeah. Did Did you ever read Rich Dad Poor Dad? I feel like that's a yeah. that's yeah, yeah for sure. I feel like people go through that phase because at the end of the book he talks about how he was able to make like two hundred and forty thousand dollars just talking to people. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, what? How do you make that much money? And then that's that was kind of my path. Like, yeah. Wait, you can make huge percentages huge percentages of money just by wholesaling and then you go try to figure it out on youtube and then yeah eventually people get to pace more b <laughs> yeah like. yeah that's, that'd be crazy to be happening like get to some kind of some kind of community that help you know excel you 
I still will always think that sub two is the best real estate community out there. Um, and it, I mean, it's, it's been the best investment that I've made monetarily for sure. Um, oh yeah. So, you know, the resources and everything like that. And then as soon as you come in, you're like, all right, this is the game plan. Let's go at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many people to help out. Um, there's so many people you just have to put yourself out there to, to find those people. And mm -hmm. eventually, at least I feel like, took me a while to f to like find the people that i that uh clicked with me but there's yeah. so many people out there that i think any like personality uh or anybody with any background can find somebody that that fits well with them so yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. cool so and then and then at some point in the journey i remember um thinking to myself so let me let me tell you about how I found you, and then we'll segue into the car thing. Mm -hmm. So, early on in my sub two, we had this situation where we had three cars, and one car was for me, one car was for my wife, and then we had another car for an au pair. An au pair is like somebody that comes and lives with you from a foreign country to watch your kids because my wife and I were both working. Yeah. So, so my au pair quit uh and got married <laughs> and yeah. so we had we had bought her a car um and it was like a nice car because we wanted it to be safe and everything for her but then when she left we had this car that we didn't need anymore and when we bought the car it was at the height of gas prices being super high mm. and so because gas prices were really high, little economy cars, uh, the demand for little economy cars went really high as well. And so we had to mm -hmm. buy, so we bought my car for 22000 And then we had this situation happen like nine months later. So when I went to go sell my car, the dealer offered me $13,000 for it. Mm -hmm. So then I was stuck. Um because we had three cars. I didn't know how to get rid of it. I had this like $300 a month car payment. Mm -hmm. And then I started watching Pace's stuff. And it didn't. I didn't quite know how to put all the pieces together. So then I reached out to you. Um, and you helped me sell it. And it was amazing. Because. Yes. So then what happened was I found a buyer. You helped me find a buyer. The mm -hmm. buyer put three thousand dollars of cash in my pocket mm -hmm. and we sold it for twenty thousand dollars so and i owed seventeen thousand on it so the buyer gave me three thousand and then the buyer took over my car payments mm -hmm. so one one version is i have a like a seven thousand dollar debt and i'm still making car payments but i don't have a car mm -hmm. But then the other flip side is I get rid of my car, $3,000 in my pocket, and now I have somebody taking over my car payments. Mm -hmm. Like one was quite a bit better than the other one. Yeah, 100%. It was an easy call. That was amazing. That was like, that was my first real sub two deal. And it was my Yeah. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> so does that easy sound, call, man. does that sound, yeah, easy call. Mm -hmm. Does that sound pretty typical? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like most of the situations that we deal with, um, somebody's either the vehicle's underwater, probably a decent payment, a decent interest rate and everything. But because of the car market just shifted and <laughs> went south, uh, a lot of the values of the vehicles you can't get. So if your loan is more than the car's value, you got to bring up the difference. And if you don't, right. you're stuck with it, you know? It's so Exactly. Exactly. That's the so alternative. How how did you start shifting over to the cars? Did you just see that there is a, a need all of a sudden because of the market shift or like, what was that? What was that journey for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I tell the same story over and over again. I've seen uh, my boy Richard Knowles in the, uh, in the chats, man. And shout out to oh, you, yeah. bro. Um, so what ended up happening was uh, along the journey of the, um, 
like, so along the journey of sub two, there came a point where I was like cash rich, but I, I just needed another car. And I didn't want to go to a dealership because I'm just in my mind. I'm like, there's got to be a way to get a better rate or do something else. Um, but Pace had dropped the docks in sub two. He had always hinted about selling, like buying a car sub two. And I just never, he never explained it. Like at the time, you know what I'm saying? He has a billion things going on. So I don't think he really explained it. At that point, he just dropped the video that it was possible. And I was like, okay, cool. He said it's possible. Everything else he said is possible will be working. So at some point, it's possible. I just got to figure it out. And right. uh, what I ended up doing was just going to Marketplace, trying to talk to people about it. Didn't really get any traction, left it alone. And then one day randomly, I don't know if it was in like February 22, March 22, something like that. But he dropped the docs on taking over payments inside of yeah. Sub2. Just right. dropped it. Just Facebook post, that. regular Facebook post. And I, I was like, that. hey, I was like, wait, what? And then like no explanation and no nothing. Just, hey, look, like we'll talk about this later. They just left it alone. And so I, I looked at the docs, started reverse engineering, like just looking up like what everything meant. Um, looking at some of the terminology and was like, okay, cool. This is possible. Now you, I can use these docs. I went back on Marketplace and kept on fighting. But uh, I, I didn't get really any traction um, with like like closing anybody and just people weren't open to the idea at that time. So I was like, all right, cool. Forget about it. Didn't care. I needed a car. I went to the dealership, got a trash interest rate and, uh, you know, but still got a car. But like probably two days after I got the car, we had a meetup in Southern California. Um, I think it was like Orange County. Uh, the dope, uh, dope hub, but Richard Knowles usually does a lot of the Southern California meetups. So as uh, we were down there after the meetup, we were just all chatting, and I was telling Richard, I was like, bro, like Pace dropped these dog on docs, man. I'm trying to give me a car sub too, bro, but I can't, I can't find it. I don't know where to find it. And so he just like, I don't know if he just thought about it himself a lot, or he just like it just came to him in the moment. But he was like, bro, nah. I mean, why don't you just like go to Turo groups. I mean, like the car market is kind of going crazy. And a lot of people are having problems with Turo. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think about that? And like, I already <laughs> bought this dog on car and I was mad as I don't know what. And I was just like, you know what? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do this. So I uh, took his advice, went home immediately, hopped on Facebook, went to different Turo groups and just started posting in the Turo groups. Like I'm looking for a car. I don't care if it's underwater. I'll take it to payments. And now, the now, amount- hold on. Let's- can you explain a little bit to not everybody knows what Turo is. Can you kind of go into why would a Turo group be a good place to go? Like how does that benefit somebody with the Turo business? Yeah, for sure. So uh, like Turo is Airbnb for cars. If, if anybody doesn't know at this point, right? So um, car sharing platform, hosts can upload their own vehicles or they can go out and buy a bunch of vehicles and uh, rent them out to other users for a short period of time and you get some money in the process. So split the money with Turo, the platform, but you can turn that into a business or if you got an extra vehicle, you can have somebody else pay your loan down when you're not using it, you just rent it out. So that's the basic premise of Turo. Um, Like I said, it's basically Airbnb for houses. The thing about Turo is that you have uh, an opportunity to make money and you have an opportunity to make a business. So for some people, the journey from side hustle to business is not always so linear for a lot of people when they first start they like the idea oh i can start a whole tarot fleet but and then they'll start with one car and then they'll realize hey, this is really hard or they'll start with a couple cars because they got the credit and they'll be like yeah but this is really hard they don't realize like this is not a side hustle you have to really treat this like a business so for yeah. a number of people who have been doing tarot not like your elite business-minded people that's like all right cool we have to do this we got to do that we're going to be really stringent on the type of cars that we get we're going to do market research. We're going to, you know, like do all of these extra things that are needed to make sure that you can run a profitable business. 99% of people don't do that. So right. the 99% yeah, 100% because of- I was, I was looking into Turo when mm-hmm. I had this extra car, I was like, okay, I'm paying $300 a month on my car. Mm-hmm. I could, I looked at the comps. They have a way of comping it on Turo. Yeah. And I was looking up what other people with a similar car, similar size of car, similar like it was it was like a car that was uh, three or four years old. Yeah, I was like, OK, somebody could rent this out like two or three times a week. And I could make like a thousand dollars a month, I think is I think I was going to make like thirteen hundred a month minus a three hundred. Yeah. 
But then I was realizing that I was going to have to take pictures before they took the car. Mm -hmm. And then I, and then when they came back, I had to take pictures afterwards. Then I had mm -hmm. to clean the car, mm -hmm. like really well clean the car. Mm -hmm. And then I had to make sure the biggest thing that I was scared about was making sure that if there was a scratch or a ding in the car, mm -hmm. I was worried that I would never quite be thorough enough to, to really catch who did it. Yeah. Um, and I was working a full-time job, um, uh, cause I'm in the military. So mm -hmm. yeah, it just seemed like, especially in the winter seasons, like what if somebody turned it in at like 10 o'clock at night? Like it would be so hard for me to that's out. Yeah. check out the car and stuff like that. So that's, I, I saw the potential of Turo and being able to make some money, but it, it was just, it was way, it was going to be way too much for me. So yeah, I, yeah. I accepted that. Yeah, unless, unless unless you have a fleet, yeah, management in place, like you have a system in place, Toro is a hard call. You know what I mean? But it's just like any business, really. It's like like unless you have a system in place, unless you have processes, unless you have people in place, um, you will have to dedicate a lot of your time to it. And uh, so, like, it didn't all click at me in that moment when I made the post and when Richard talked about it. But as as it went on and you started listening to people's stories about why they wanted to sell. Um, especially being underwater, you would never talk to them if they could just sell it normally because it would yeah. just be an easy sale on marketplace or, you know, direct a, a buyer. But when people are in a bind and you start going to their story, it's like, okay, these are the common things that keep coming up. Like somebody did this, they thought it was going to be a great side hustle, turn into a whole full-time job away from their full-time job. And they just too much got an extra car payment. They don't feel like being responsible for it anymore, but it's underwater now. So right. at that time, um, you know, when I first posted, when I when I first made the post, like it was literally the very first post. And I ain't gonna hold you, it's probably like 160 some odd comments underneath with a bunch of cars from like exotics to basics and everything in between. And I was like, this can't be real. So I I, I went yeah. in and started like just hitting a bunch of people. My DM started going crazy on the, on the seller side. Right, right. And I started pitching like, hey, let me just go ahead and just take a few payments. Here's how we'll do it, blah, blah, blah. We ended up creating kind of like a system in my mind that I was just kind of working through because uh, I based it off of wholesaling houses or like just dealing with creative finance for houses, like sub the house. I was like, all right, cool. Just keep the same concept, do it with the cars. And I would tell people how, about it and the amount of people who were like, yeah, no, that's cool. We can do it. We can do it. And I was like, I already got a car. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to start a two-row fleet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know y'all yeah. trying to get rid of this. So like, what the hell are we going to do with all these cars? So... So you um, saw a huge like, need. So you saw a huge yeah. need because Pace posted that thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching that thing like four times. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is possible. This is possible. But then I was like, I don't think I really actually know how to put all the little pieces together. Yeah. Um, and you just decided I'm going to be that guy that does this. And you just. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't see anybody else doing it. It wasn't. Um, I really, I just, I just saw the need and I was just like, all right, cool. Find the, find the most problems, make the most money. That was one thing in the back of my mind. But the other thing in my mind was just like, all right, well, there's a problem here. If you can solve it and then you can do it over and over again, think about how many people you can and help with. It. So, so it's like, all right, cool. Well, uh, oh. I took, what's up? All right. I got to fix my audio just a second. Oh, wait, wait, wait. All you right. can keep on talking. Sean. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see. Oh, yeah. She's talking about my guy, Kai. Uh, uh is like the 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 mastermind um brains in our systems uh top well so he just jumped on see my guy chris james over there shout out to you my boy uh sanchez what's up baby um but yeah so like the 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 base once i found that many people it was like all right well probably i can find a fee here so I went and went to the creative page for Pace Morby. Um, I got a few people to agree that I was going to find them a buyer and everything like that. And then uh, went to the uh, Facebook page uh, created for Pace Morby, posted a few cards that we had available and that side blew up. And it was just like, ever since then, like like number of people that just hit me up about the cars and like we did a number of transactions up front, but I didn't have every bit of detail on the back end of how to make sure everything was on point. Like before I actually started doing it, I called around the insurance companies, called around the different DMVs, um, like DMVs in different parts of the country. Someone was like, 
nah, you can't do it. Someone was like, yeah, yeah, you can do it. I've seen it. Someone was like, yeah, I've seen you do it, but I don't really know because it's this and that, da da da. da. So um, I, I started getting like a lot of conflicting um, information and then a lot of information that was like, okay, you have to do it this kind of way. But the only way you can really do it is if you do it this way. Um, and it wasn't really a common way. Same thing with insurance. You talk to claims adjusters, you talk to different agents, you talk to brokers, um, you, you, you talk to the people who like matter in terms of like them actually passing something through if a, if a claim happens um, and how to insure a vehicle that's not yours, like or not in your name. Uh, you know, you just go around and just do as much research, right? So after I did enough of that research and that's when we started, um, I came up with the process of like going through escrow making sure that the money's secure. Um, we already had the paperwork and it was just understanding the paperwork. And then it was just like, all right, cool, let's put it together. Let's run through a few transactions. And every single person that I did the transactions with, it was like, yo, this is crazy. This is genius. Like every, everybody, it didn't even click to me at first. It was just like, all right, cool. We just wholesale the cars in my mind. But um, for them, it was like, you solved a major problem. Like, bro, I would have had to pay a ridiculous amount of money to get out of this loan. And the fact that you connected me with somebody else who they, they run a business, they like a uh, few of the cars. I had a, uh, a couple of buyers that ran Turo fleets. Um, I did have some personal buyers, but I had some buyers that ran Turo fleets and they were really, really good. So like their loans were good and everything like that. They were fine. Yeah. Um, some of the first cars we had did, we had did like a, a Range Rover, a, um, uh, a Mercedes GLB, uh, 2020 Mercedes GLB. We did, um, was that one of the first ones? The, my, my yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Your Corolla was probably like, uh, I would probably say your Corolla was like probably the 11th or 12th one. Oh, okay. Um, okay. At, at that point. Cause like, like mm. it, it was like, I didn't do a whole bunch of them. Cause like I said, we wanted to make sure that it was like really on point and back end kind of stuff was, was good. So dealing with insurance claims, um, like in case shit happens, claims like, you know, all of these different scenarios, if the car gets repossessed, if the car gets stolen, like all of those things, I wanted to make sure that at least we understood. Um, so it was something I was doing on the side. I was still hosting houses, you know what I'm saying? And um, I ended up, like, I started buying properties and stuff like that. And it was just like, all right, this car thing is on the side. We'll, we'll keep it going. But I think the demand started really, really increasing. And people knew that I could do the cars. And I just, nobody else really, it was just wide open. I mean, I, like, nobody else really jumped in and was like, hey, look, this is how you do the cars. Like, took the amount of risks that I took. And Pace would just talk about it here and there. Then he would talk about, hey, I bought an Escalade. And then, like, it would really oh, yeah, the, yeah. the, the right. conversation. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, but and like I said, obviously, like, Pace is teaching us how to buy businesses, teaching us how to deal with, like, PMLs, teaching us how to buy commercial. Like, he, the man has a lot on his plate. So it's, it's hard to be like, hey, look, you should have taught us how to do it. Like, he gave us the blueprint. It's just a matter of, like, hey, just go out and take some action. So that's really what I did. And then people started to get to know me for the car. So then it became like a huge demand where my inbox instead of houses and, hey, Mike, I need you to close my deal. It became, hey, yeah. Mike, I got a, a question about this car situation. Hey, Mike, I got a question about this RV. And it just, it really yeah. started piling on there. And I was like, all right, cool, it's a demand. Might as well go ahead and build a system around it. You see the market has gotten right. worse with vehicles. So now it's like, well, the only way out of a lot of these loans, I mean, people have two, three, 4% loans. Oh yeah, mine was upside down. three point. <laughs> 3.5 something. Yeah. So it benefited the buyer because then the buyer is like, I don't have to get my credit checked. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have to get a new loan and get a 7% interest rate. Cause if I were right. to, like, if the buyer from my car would have bought it regular, she would have, uh, she'd have paid like a cool nine, like, like, no, 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 no. no. She'd probably, she'd probably pay like 11%, like, well, we're probably like, like 10, 11% or something like that. Cause like she had, really? she has decent credit, but she doesn't have like 800 credit or like 750 credit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So like, like where she's at, like she has solid credit, you know what I mean? But it's not like amazing. So with rates, even with stellar credit, like one, one guy on my team, um, uh, my boy Chaz, he actually works at a dealership and they're getting like superb credit, 800 credit scores, people coming out of it with 8.99% interest rates. You oh know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, it's crazy, <laughs> you know? So like, like to think about it like that, if your credit isn't like super stellar, you're getting a high rate. There's no way around it. Yeah. So, but it's just like with houses, right? So like you get a house now, it's like seven and a half, eight percent And yeah. you getting that on a $500,000 loan, like your, your, pay, your house payment is crazy. You can't, nobody's magically making more money. 
So that's why I like the the home sales have been slowing down. People have gorgeous houses and can't move them. Same thing with the cars. People have great cars or great interest rates, but they can't sell it because right. nobody's about to go out and pay your full asking price at 10%. They got to get a loan from the bank to pay you the, to pay your loan off, but you got a 3% loan. Like why trade that up? You know what I'm saying? Like pay wow. says it all the time. Like the only people that make money in them scenarios is the bank. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Cause the bank would sell one, one loan for 3.5 and then instead of getting, so like for my, my example, Mm -hmm. Mine was 3.5% and mm -hmm. the car payments were like 280 or something. Yeah. But you take that same car, turn around and have a 10% interest rate. And that car payment is now like, it was like 500. 400. Yeah. Four, something. four, 50, 500, something like that. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know the math, but. No, nah, you're good. You, you're right on yeah. point. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Right. So, but this is what the car market is expecting everybody to do. And the problem is that people ain't magically making a whole lot more money. So it makes right. it very difficult for somebody to do that. And then you sit there stuck with a debt that doesn't make any sense because your old pair, she quit, she went off, got married. She's, you know, like shout out to her. She's doing the things she wanted to do for her life, but you stuck with this car. So right. I was like, you can come up with 7,000, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come up with the difference and then give it to the dealer or to a private party and they'll pay cash. But you got to come up with that money. So like, yeah. what's the point? You know what I mean? So, and uh, there, I mean, think of how many millions of people are going to the dealership and they're just getting screwed over mm -hmm. because they don't know how to do this. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay. So, ne so, I mean, if you could scale this big, mm -hmm. I mean, this could be huge. This could be a huge business for you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we have to be working on. That's what we have to be working on. So, I mean, like, like initially, we, we wanted to do this because we wanted to be a um, like a resource to sub to, like for the community, um, just for like places where uh, we wanted to be a premier place inside of a safe space and sub to where people can like, you know, start a cars, buy cars, stuff like that. And they teach you how to go out and find these on marketplace. And then us as investors, we behind the paywall. There's a lot of integrity. Um, reputation and stuff on the line. So people tend to do, you know, better so, uh, with that creating right. that kind of space and just peeling back the curtain on like how to do the transactions, how to deal with it. Like we, we TC a lot of deals uh, for vehicles just for this reason. But then we also have, you know, situations where sellers will come to us and be like, Hey, I need you to help me sell my car. Cause I don't know what to do, or I don't know what to ask for. I don't know what it's worth or whatever the case is because it's upside down. Can you help? So we have, we like, we built out a system that, initially was to do that specifically for sub two but as we continue to see how like serious of an issue this is like all right our, our goal is to scale this up um to where we can really benefit the world at large um but we're going through phases you know what i'm saying but this is definitely like part of our our, our process so uh, we built out top wheels the concept of just taking over payments is what it's named after and uh yeah bro it's it's, it's nuts yeah i remember so i think so you, you talked a lot about mindset at the beginning and maybe yeah. we could tie in some mindset stuff because when we were going through this, I remember there was like one or two things that we kind of had, had to get over some hurdles with insurance, I think. Yeah. Um, but I just remember you were like, we're going to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a mindset thing where, like in school, we are taught like, hey, you need to study the chapter in the book and then you take a test. And so you, mm -hmm. you learn as much as you can because all the answers in the book. Yeah. And you go see how we can perform. Yeah. But in this case, you're more like exploring. And you just have to have that mindset of this is going to work, right? What, yeah. How, yeah. what, what do you think was like, what's your mindset behind? We're just like trailblazing like what does it take do you think to to be a trailblazer in this in this um you know yeah. th this uh different world of being an entrepreneur where you don't have all the answers yeah i mean that's that's really what it is is, is confidence one um and confidence is going to come from like your competence like like your own past and the things that you've been able to accomplish um just by taking action 
right? Like you, like you could take action in a school system where they say, you know, study, take a test, study, take a test, right? Um, but eventually you're going to have some results of your ability. And then at, at some point, that's going to instill some level of confidence in you to go ahead and be like, all right, if I can do this and this thing, why can't I do that over here? And then for uh, me, like transition from the corporate world or like sales world or whatever to pure entrepreneurship was like, I already had a basis in music, having to kind of deal with, you know, all right, well, we just going to eat off of beats until, you know, whenever the thing comes. So you always have to figure something out. But like when you really get down to it, it's like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, like internally, like I, I listen, I listen to the voice internally. That's like God talking to me, like go. And then there's a level of where you don't necessarily understand it, but all right. Confidence you walk with the faith, like, all right, cool, let's just go and let's just see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't you don't do anything with any ill intent, not doing any, anything like this to all right, we're gonna try to take advantage of people, or we're gonna try to do like just negative kind of stuff. It's like, all right, well, I got a cool heart about it, let's just figure it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and we're going to something else. But if it does, it's great. So really it was the continual like building of a mindset. It's like, all right, we'll figure it out because it's gonna work mm -hmm. out some kind of way. Whatever we need to do right. to, to work it out, it'll work out. You know what I'm saying? And I think with with this, especially like we have a cheat code, bro. Like being in sub two, it's not even just like like the internal confidence that you have to have, but we have a support system that's unheard of. Yeah. So for sure. the level of resources is like you can fall on your face, but then you can you can do so much, even if you don't know people like that. This is what people if you don't know nobody like that, you can fall on your face and make a post inside of sub two. And be like, hey, I'm struggling with this. I need help with that, blah, blah, blah. And the amount of people who are willing to support you and help you out and reach out to you and call you and be like, hey, look, I'll help you out with this or we'll walk through this. Like, it's, it's crazy. So, like, why crazy. not take it? Why not take the risk? Like, like your risk is already mitigated by your network. So, you know, kind of thinking about it like that, I'm like, all right, cool. Well, shit, I wouldn't even have known this was an option if Pace didn't put the docs in there. So, clearly, it's something that I don't know, but it's possible let me go after it because I can't wait for the next training. I don't know when that's coming out, but I know it's possible. We'll figure this out and, you know, kind of go from there. And that, that, that just comes along with just like taking action. You know what I'm saying? So you had a belief that is there, that it's possible and then just take the action. Dude, that is so true. Um, last week I had this moment where I was, I was about to give up on my lives. And mm -hmm. um, my, my friend from work was like, he was like, bro, are you doing your lives tonight? And mm -hmm. I was like, no, I'm kind of giving up on him. And then he said, and he might even be listening tonight, but he's like, you got it. You got it. He's like, you were talking a big game and now you're giving up. And I'm like, wait, yeah. no, no, I'm not. And so I last week I posted like an hour and a half before my live. And I said, help me. Mm -hmm. I need a guest. And like 10 people volunteered to, to show up on my show last, last week. It was, yeah. I, it was cool. You just gotta ask. That's fire, that, man. That's fire, man. Yeah, you 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 have you have the network, bro, and it's it's good. Like shout out to your friend uh, for getting on him, because yeah, that's you know that's what we need sometimes. Um, yeah, but it, it's like I'm, I'm I'm gonna send you a song too. I'm gonna send you a song once we uh, once we get off here. I'm gonna send you a song. It's by this artist. Uh, he's from Baltimore. He's one of my favorite artists. Uh, like period, actually. But um, I'm like as far as motivation, like he's somebody I listen to when I'm working out or like when I'm when I'm doing business and stuff like that because he he talks about like continual grind and like motivation, how it fleets, but like you have to keep going, especially when you when you first start out and you get an idea that's like, all right, cool, yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna go after it. I'm gonna start this podcast. I'm gonna start this car, I'm gonna start this real estate journey, I'm gonna start this, you know, clothing business, I'm gonna start this uh, you know, artistry, whatever the case is. You start off with so much fire, it's crazy. You start off with all the fire and then you might get a little bit of success and then you'll chill out. Or you might not get much of nothing and then you chill out. But the problem with that is, is that you can't move like you don't want it no more. What, what made you do it is because you wanted it. And when you hold on to that desire of like that want, like you have to accept that it's going to be ups and downs. But if you keep on going, you, like you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? And um, hmm. so like it is, it's really it really comes down to a mindset of just like like continually, continually going like and it, it doesn't it doesn't it's not always going to be you at 100 percent every single day. That's impossible. Anybody that sells you on that is phony. But if you right. at, at least like the concept of one percent better every day, like rings true. If you just keep on like going even a little bit, even if you got just a little bit in you, but just keep going, like just to do it to check it off, 
if you got just one percent today, cool with it. You can give it twenty percent tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? But like the, the point is just to keep going. You don't ever want to give up on yourself because you are the best investment. Like it's always good to bet on yourself, bro. So like I'm I'm super proud of you for you know jumping on because I remember we talked about it when we were uh when we were getting the car. And he was like, Yeah, man, you do this YouTube channel, we gonna be doing this and that. And I was like, All right, yeah, cool, yeah. man. Yeah, like let's do it. Yeah. I was excited, you know what I'm saying? I was excited to see you here, man. It's dope. It's, it's super, super, super yeah. dope, man. So, you know, actually, now right. that you're yeah. talking about this, I think uh, you're one of the people that after after you helped me sell my car, I think you checked on me and you're like, hey, man, how you doing? And I was like, good. I think I'm going to do social media. And you were like, yo, did you know that there's a whole series of Zooms on social media? Yeah. And then I went and watched those and it it, it, it like opened my mind about the possibilities of social media so i yeah. remember you, you even and you were you even encouraged me afterwards um yeah so yeah dude so much of that was so deep but yeah i don't think you get it until you're until you're willing to make that jump like i'm gonna do this crazy thing mm. that all of my family uh thinks is a bad idea mm. um all of my this circle of friends, my high school friends, my whoever, they just don't get it until you, yeah. until you go and you have that. I even, I felt very similar. I felt like there was an inner voice, higher power telling me like, you got to do this. You got to mm -hmm. do more than what you are right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Let's Direction, see. Does anybody, does anybody in the audience want to ask a question? We got it. We got an audience, dude. You brought a you brought a crew with you. No oh, worries. Nah, shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all jumping on. Let's see, yeah, I see, uh, I see Paul. I'm gonna get back to you, Paul. Usually, usually people don't participate. It's okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I uh, I don't even know who I was on. I don't even know how to see it. Really. Um. Trying to see. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing up, throwing up some things here. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. But yeah, man. Like I said, bro. Like, like that. Like now, you now you in it, and you can't you can't stop. So like, I know it's I'm... gonna be it's gonna be times you going up and down. You gonna get good at like I know you was telling me uh, yesterday. You was like you gonna do your radio voice. You gonna get really good, and it's gonna get to the space where you start looking back at some of these early videos and be like, man. I should, oh, I, I, that was too much in my head. Let me just go ahead and keep on going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me just go ahead and keep on going. Shoot. Look, so. you got a Sanjan, Sanjana Pahalad wants to do a, do a deal with you. That's awesome. Yeah, bro. Uh, shoot me a DM. I don't know what kind of deal you, you represent, whether it's a house, a car, or whatever, but just shoot me a DM, bro. I'll be happy to help you. Yeah. Do, I mean, do people have to be a sub two student to work to nah. do these deals with you still, or nah. just you're, you're branching out? No, no, no. I mean, like anybody, really. Like, I'm, I'm active in a lot of real estate communities. I just, um, when it comes to the mentorship, obviously, we talk about it because we both are sub too. But um, the free page, uh, wherever, bro, if you got a problem, whether it's a house you need help closing, um, can't talk to a seller, can't talk to an agent, right? Like, and they're giving you hell. Like, I can negotiate, close the deal for you, um, get it locked up. We can split it or help you buy it yourself. Um, if you have a vehicle that you are trying to buy or you need to sell, Reach out to us. We got an entire system. It's topwheels.io. Feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help you TC the process. If you already got a buyer or you already got the other party involved, we'll help you finalize all of the paperwork and do the, the transaction, deal with the DMV, the insurance, all that kind of stuff, as well as if you need help. Um, just making sure that you got the right kind of person that's going to be buying the vehicle. We'll help you out with that too. So reach yeah, out, yeah. shoot me a DM. We got a team. Um, I got my assistant that helps me out with my DMs. Our DMs kind of go crazy, but um more than happy to help you out and, and get the deals done bro cool what's your um what's your instagram um two instagrams uh one is at michael j off 410 and a uh, real estate instagram is at mike will close michael jr 410 yeah cool is that the best way to get a hold of you if they want to do a car facebook. transaction facebook bro facebook at mike will close it is a, the best way to reach me Facebook at my deal. Say it again. No, Mike will close it. I'm a, um, oh, I, I can comment. Can I? Uh, yeah. Uh, Mike will close it. Mike will close it. Oh, Facebook. Mike will close it. 
Oh. Oh, snap. I just got commented as your admin. <laughs> All right. No, no I'll show it. it. Cool. Mike will close it on Facebook. Cool, yeah. cool. All right, man. Well, this has been a this has been a great time. Thanks, for, thanks for being a go giver. Um, I I always feel blessed when people come onto my show because I'm not really big. Like, if somebody yeah, bigger would be like, "Hey, come onto my show," they'd be like, "It'd be different." But you're man, helping me good, grow. Bro. You're like, helping like, me yeah, grow, you, man. It's, it's the process, bro. Like, we support the process. You you can't get big until you start small. So don't yeah. even trip. You know what I'm saying? Everybody right. starts small. It's all good. It's just the it's just the go giver community, just the yeah. go giver attitude attitude that's that's in the community. So yeah, hundred percent. You already know right. we need anything. You hit me up. That's an easy call. Of course, of course. All right. Well, I'm going to end the stream. Thank you everybody for coming. Next week I have a guest lined up. Uh, her name's Shani Naza, and she is an immigrant who buys businesses, and she wants to talk about how to buy a business. Um, as an immigrant, because there's a lot of mindset issues that immigrants have where they think they need to like be a citizen or they think they need to have a green card. And she says that you don't have to have those things. So that's hard. It's going to be cool. And yeah, that's tough. I'm trying to buy a business right now. She's going to help me. So, all right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Mike, for coming on. Appreciate you, man.